So we'll begin uh, uh, with a conversation with Erica, and uh, you can also um, begin sending your questions to the Q&A section. So once again, hello everyone. My name is Lydia Tulenkova, and I'm an event director at a new emerging platform, Alpha Arts. Alpha Arts committed to helping humanities and social science students from academic choices, community activities, to backgrounds, employment, and career planning. And I'm very glad to see you all at our first session of Career in the Arts series, talk series. Uh, in this series, we'll connect professionals with the current students who are in the arts program. And today, we have an honor to talk with a doctor, pro with a donor progress officer at the development department of the Popular Plants Gallery, Erica Russell. Hello, Erica. Hi. Once again, how are you today? I'm good. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having yeah. me. That's great. Uh, I'm so excited to see you and have the opportunity to ask you about your career path. So, okay, let's get started. Um, could you please tell us a little bit more about your current position, about your job? What are your, du what are your duties? Yes, yeah, so I'm the donor programs officer at the power plant, so I obviously work in development. Um, I'm in charge of all the memberships and donor programmings that we have at the gallery. Um, so we kind of curate various collection visits, whether it be private or corporate. We also do really fun um, artist studio visits that we we kind of program throughout the year. I work closely with our glorious donor programs assistant and we have a lot of programming that's also around our young patrons program called the uh, Circle of Contemporaries, which is a group of amazing young people who are just eager to learn more about the art world and get to you know talk to artists and galleries. Um, another part of my role is to program the art travel program that we have usually twice a year with our patrons, with our circle of supporter level uh, mm -hmm. donors. And we usually travel somewhere internationally or domestic. So last fall, I believe, everything feels so far away now because of the pandemic. But last fall, um, we worked with Partners in Art and we went to Washington, D.C. And I think a few months before that, they went to Marfa, Texas, which mm -hmm. was an extraordinary experience. So... Yeah. A lot of things that we do, but it's primarily around like donor relations in the gallery and finding various people who will be willing to support, you know, the exhibitions that we have and some of the artists who are able to commission works for the shows. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. That's great. Uh, actually, I'm really curious, how does your typical day look like? Like, yes, do you have some, some like schedule for example like um uh, i don't have any i i'm not working but i'm studying and for, for example i have classes at, at, at the morning and so mm -hmm. then i have a rest and then like to, to my to my homework do you have like anything like okay so today i'm gonna like uh talk with this person then i'm gonna do this work um something like this right so no matter how much i plan no day is the same and there's always something that's like thrown into the mix so no day is the same um usually like when i come in i kind of check in with our donor programs assistant to see where she's at with kind of like our renewals because that's something that's under her umbrella just mm -hmm. to check in to make sure that everyone's up to date and if they're willing to renew their memberships um, usually I do a lot of email checks to see if any inquires have been coming in based on whatever time of year we're at. We kind of spend some time with the curatorial department and our director, our fearless leader, Gaetan Verna, to go over some of the upcoming exhibitions in order to see if we have any donors who would be willing to support the show. So my day-to-day -day varies. It always yeah. varies but depending on where we are placed in the year is kind of will yeah. determine what our upcoming projects are you know so for instance if we were in May let's say mm -hmm. May last year everyone is all hands on deck and we're working with like the major events team trying to help out with Powerball which is a which is our big annual fundraiser so everyone's helping yeah. out selling tickets 
And it's the same thing if we're early February, we're all helping out trying to get ready for face to face to make sure we can sell mm -hmm. tickets to get all these patrons to be able to sit with these extraordinary artists and just devour delicious food at the Globe and Mail Center. Oh, great. Yeah. So it depends yeah. where we are in the year. <laughs> yeah, this, is so, this is so interesting, I think, like this flexibility, you know? Yeah. It's great. It's really great. And I think also that's something because we're a very small team. Um, mm -hmm. One of my colleagues always says that uh, the power plant is small but mighty. So, you know, you really have ownership over whatever, pro whatever project you're working on and everyone gets to help out. Like, for instance, our finance coordinator at Powerball gets to help mm -hmm. out with like selling tickets and, you know, getting people other things. Anyways, it's wild. Everyone gets to do a little bit of everything. So it's pretty fun. Yeah. And actually, my next question, like, what's the most challenging part of your job in the gallery? <gasps> Yeah. Oh, the most yeah. challenging, yes. challenging like, thing. Like the well, crazy, the, the I am, my goodness. Well, I am in fundraising. So we want to make sure that we are able to work with these artists, that we can commission new works, that, that we can create publications for them. And then when we're creating yeah. these publications for them, we want to be able to get like the best authors involved or have like amazing other organizations collaborate with us. So yeah. I would say it's primarily fundraising. Like again, we are a non-for-profit, so we got to make the asks. We have an amazing grants and sponsorship officer who's always making the big asks to like um, a lot of granting bodies. And so I think that would be the most challenging thing is to make sure that we hit all of our targets. We're able to get as many people involved in the gallery, whether it's through memberships or exhibition support. Um, mm -hmm. It's the money. We want to make the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... But it's all that's, worth it. It's always, it's all worth it. You know, I love it, so... Yeah, that's great. that's great. Yeah, I think it's a dream jo job for a lot of people in humanities and so social sciences, you know. And I'm wondering, uh, what are the characteristics which one needs to have a chance to get a position like yours? Like, what are some personal abilities or traits that are required. Right. So again, everybody is different and every, everyone comes in with different skills to, to present to the table. I happen to be a massive extrovert and I just love talking to people and making like new acquaintances and getting to know like gallery owners. So I personally, I think that being like a people person and you know being able to like work the rooms so people who are comfort or like who are comfortable in um, networking events like they would thrive i think you really have to be very adaptable um, yeah. particularly with an organization like the power plant where we're a smaller team so we have like big departments of two or one in some cases so you have to be flexible and able to quickly right. adapt um, I remember this one, I don't know if she'll be angry that I bring this up, but this, I believe it was a couple Powerballs ago, we had a huge um, artwork that was in our Claire story, and it was like these three beautiful balloons, and mm -hmm. one of them popped, and so I was just in a corner freaking out, but then the person who's actually in charge of all this was just like, okay let's deal with it. It's okay. And I'm like, oh, that <laughs> role, you <laughs> might be patient. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, for my, for my position specifically, I think, you know, being adaptable, being flexible, easy on, like, very quick um, when you need to be, and because it is in fundraising, you always have to, like, just ask is one thing that that's something that I'm learning as well as I go along where um, I think it's really important that they may say yes, they may say no, but you'll never know if you don't ask. So it's yeah. important to always put yourself out there. What can be very, it can, it can be difficult, even mm -hmm. for someone like me that I claim to be an extrovert and a Leo, but still it can be, it's, you know, you really have to put yourself out there. But yeah. again, you learn these things, you know? Yeah, that's right. But uh, for example, about your fl flexibility, did you develop these skills um, or it's just in your nature? Like? Um, I think it's both. 
Mm -hmm. I think, um, I had a very odd upbringing where I, I lived overseas my entire life. And so my father works for the International Red Cross, so we had to move every two years. So I think since I've been uh, a kid, I've learned how to always adapt yeah. and to always put myself out there and make new friends and always be on. Um, but even professionally, with time, it's something that you learn and you learn your boundaries and you learn um, how comfortable you are in specific situations. So yes. Yes, you get a lot of experience, right? So for me, it's both. I had that kind of my own personality, mm -hmm. but at the same time, in this environment, I'm still learning every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, well, right. Um, and I know that your career and particularly your education path started from University of Ottawa, right? Yes. Where you studied history and arts administration, right? I did, yeah. It's really funny how I ended up in Ottawa because when I, d I was in my final year of high school and I was living in New Delhi, India. We were posted there. Mm -hmm. And because I had been away from Canada for so long, in my mind, I didn't even think about what is the best school that can offer the best program in this field. I was yeah. just, I want to go home. Like, I want to go see my friends that I've known since I was in diapers, right? Yeah. And that was why I went to Ottawa U. Like I applied for schools in New York. I applied for schools in uh, BC and mm -hmm. I got into these schools, but then I was like, I want to go to Ottawa. Yeah. Which, I did, which I'm grateful for. But then four mm -hmm. years later, I was like, oh no, I'm in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> like I love this place, but mon dieu. <laughs> yes. Sure. Okay, I understand with uh, your choice regarding your university, but yeah. uh, regarding your field, like um, you, you studied history and arts administration. And yeah. um, my, my, my question is, what drew you to this field? Wow, oh my goodness. So I've kind of always been around performing arts. Um, mm -hmm. My mother back in the back in the day, used to be a professional photographer and my father was very much into performing arts so I was very fortunate to be able to do a lot of like to witness a lot of ballets contemporary ballet um, the opera was always playing on some vinyl in in the apartment um, so I've always had kind of artsy around me uh -huh. um, I also did okay in my art classes it was like such a fun a fun class to be in in high school. So I've always been kind of very immersed in that kind of world. And yeah. I also have an uncle who is a professional artist. I have an aunt who is a fashion designer. So I'm always kind of surrounded by that, a lot of creativity. That so this I creative need, atmosphere, right? Right, yeah. And can you tell? I'm just <laughs> still, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so when I, I didn't know at that point very early on if I wanted to focus, like go to art school and focus on a mm -hmm. specific medium, I wasn't sure. So I was having like these talks with various family members and professors and advisors and a lot of them were just like, you know, no one is studying arts administration, you know, and yeah. I, I think I got to a point where I, I, when I was younger, I didn't feel that I was good enough to pursue mm -hmm. art um, professionally especially yeah. if, you know, I was told growing up that you're not going to make any money, so what's the point? But I wanted, right? And that's such a terrible thing to say to a person. But I, I, <laughs> why is it awful? But, so, but then I was like, I know, but I still want to get in there somehow. Mm -hmm. So I was encouraged to pursue arts administration. And that just opened a lot of doors. And I was so grateful that I took arts admin. Um, because in that program, you know, I was taught a lot of things. It was still new when I was there, so there wasn't that much focus on like grant writing, but I feel like even today, not everyone has the opportunity to learn in a classroom how to write a grant, right? Yes, yes. But um, talking of your uh, education and your next steps, like then you decided to pursue your education and you graduated from the University of Edinburgh, yes? Yes. Yes, so after four years in Ottawa, yeah, that's Ottawa, Ontario's heart, I was over it, and I was just, I got that travel bug again, 
And at this point, my family was based in Malaysia. And I was just calling my mom on the phone saying, I need to leave this city. Like, and I knew I wanted to pursue like higher education. I wanted to continue in this field. But I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to go somewhere else. So I did apply to the Glasgow School of Art, which is an exceptional school um, for fine arts. And they do a lot of amazing things there. Um, and then when I was doing my research, I found out that there was a program that had just been created in Edinburgh, which uh, happened after the Edinburgh College of Art and the University of Edinburgh had merged. Mm -hmm. so we could basically be in this program and have professors that were a part of the university and also a part of the college. Mm -hmm. And it was modern contemporary art, uh, criticism, curating, and history. Oh, they're gonna, the alumni team's gonna kill me for butchering the name. But it was like the first year that they had created this program. And it was so great because it focused only on modern and contemporary art because mm -hmm. I loved art history. But I could not sit through another class on medieval art. Yeah. No disrespect to anybody who's in that field. I just couldn't do it anymore, you know? <laughs> so, you studied medieval, right? You studied, you studied med medieval art when... Yeah. Well, when I did, like, art history, you have to do, like, you're doing, like, the whole thing, right? Oh, yeah. And so I just, I was good with focusing on modern and contemporary art, so I didn't have to go back to that one. So it was such a good opportunity because this program had, I think, theory and, dis uh, theory and display, uh, modern and contemporary art, and it was a very small program. There was literally maybe, like, 40 of us, so it was really intimate and fantastic. There was um, medieval art, renaissance, and I'm missing somebody else. Anyways, there was like a lot of branches within this program, which was mm -hmm. wonderful. So I got the travel bug. I applied to go to Scotland, and I always had this great connection with Scotland. So I thought this was a sign that this program had just been created, and I wanted to get in there. And, yeah. and it was great. And I did, and then I, it was a one-year taught masters because you could do research but at that point I didn't know if there was something specific that I wanted to write about in my thesis so mm -hmm. I chose the top masters so you'll get various classes throughout the year and then once you passed all of those courses you're then allowed to go into the thesis writing portion of yeah. the year which I think is kind of the same here maybe I'm terrible uh, I don't know actually but you need two years, I think, in Canada. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for not knowing this, but... <laughs> okay, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, um, like, uh, about master's de degree, I know that uh, your master's program was um, amazing. Uh, based on your experience, it was such luck, like, oh, but a lot of people doubt whether they should stay at university to get master's degree. So do you think that master's degree, uh, degree is, is, is essential for uh, your field, for arts? Um, and if uh, it is important to have master's de degree in your field, uh, why? Well, personally for me, again, I'm like the black sheep of the art world family perhaps, but I don't, I think it's important. I don't think it's essential. I did it because I want to, I wanted to further my education in a specific, um, topic. Like in that program, like I, I was taught how to be a curator, but mm -hmm. then after that program, I realized I don't, I didn't think I wanted to be a curator. Like, I'm trained, but I don't want to do curation, right? So I think if you are able to, if you know what you want to do after you come out of your four years of university and you don't feel that you want to continue on your education in whatever field, I don't think you need to. Obviously, on your CV, it looks great. But again, like, master's degrees are expensive. I know for me, I had to work throughout my undergrad just to pay for my undergraduate degree. And then again, I had to work and keep saving up for my master's degree that I'm still paying for to this day, right? But I'm yeah. still grateful that um, I got this degree because it did allow me to get this position. It did allow me to experience new things and meet new people. 
And one thing that I'm really grateful for is when I was doing my um, undergraduate degree, I did two internships. Mm-hmm. And then for my master's degree, I had to do one internship. So with the master's degree, I worked at a commercial art gallery um, that was one run by this extraordinary woman who was an artist and she run her gallery. So at that point in my life, I was like, ooh, maybe I want to run my own art gallery and also be an artist, right? But then it, with my experiences with that, I was just like, mm, maybe not, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I love being in this environment, but maybe that's not for me, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, so actually it shows that, like, it, it's, it, it, like, basically it showed you, like, your path and mm-hmm. your choices, your opportunities. And yeah. also it, um, like, you learned a lot about your work and your potential work, yeah. right? So, but, but in fact, master's degree, it, it's not, it's like 100% essential to get a position in uh, the field of arts, right? Yeah, and I feel like some people also forget that the art world has so many, there are so many things that you can do within that department. Like just thinking like within that, an, an art space or a museum, for instance, at the power plant, there's development, there's the director's office, you know, you could do fundraising, you can do special events. We have an mm-hmm. extraordinary like installation crew and they're mind blowing. Yeah. You know, they're like, there are so many components that um, a master's degree is great. If you can do it, if you want to do it, go for it. I think I learned a lot about myself, about my interests and my passions by, by doing it. If I wanted to continue, um, I don't know, in a specific thing, like I, I wrote a lot about like black bodies um, when I was at Ottawa, when I was at, sorry, in Edinburgh because no one was talking about it. So I wanted to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so if I want to continue that one day and not c- pursue a career in fundraising, maybe I might do a PhD. I don't yeah. think so. I don't think so. But you never know, you know? So yes. if you can, That's go amazing. for it, you know? And a master's degree is hard. It's hard work. It's discipline. It's resilience, you know? So yes. if you, like you will know your best self in that environment. So just go for it. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And it's not about, easy. <laughs> actually, yes. I, I was going to ask you, like, talking of uh, education and this extremely complicated process of studying, like, I know I'm a student, I'm experimenting right now. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah, is so- new hair that's grown. Like... <laughs> Hey, when I was at uni, I was like, coffee. Yeah. oh man, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, but like, um, can we talk a little bit about like the most important things our students should pay attention to while studying? Probably you can give us some advice or something like that you wish you knew, for example. Oh man. Um, drink more water. Kidding. That's still important. But, uh, <laughs> um, oh man, like there are things that I guess I should have spoke, like for instance, I brought up grant writing. No one taught us about grant writing. No one taught us, you know, how to create portfolios. You know, I had a lot of friends who were in like the fine arts department and I had one friend who quit because she said that she was being taught a specific way to do things and she wasn't able to be creative enough but I yes. feel like a lot of these universities I don't know if it's the same but like you need to speak up and you know I feel like if I had gone to my teacher and my professors and said I want to learn how to do this mm-hmm. can you deliver this and yes. I see this now as if it's something that's easy and anybody can do it but I feel like that's something that we should have asked for. Cause I remember being around with my fellow um, uh, arts admin students and we were talking about the curriculum and we were just not getting what we had to do. You know, I, um, in, w- through my arts administration program I had to take financial accounting. And I know you and I were talking about this earlier but I hated uh, financial accounting with a passion. 
But the thing is, we were doing like case studies and learning about these organizations and their financial stuff, mm -hmm. but like big corporations, like billions and billions of dollars. And we're doing all this math and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I don't know this. Oh, no. So I feel like for, for our world, we should be focusing on maybe smaller organizations and smaller budgets and finding creative ways to save money. You know, like little, like day-to-day -day things that are more um, like tangible, like things that we can use in our day-to-day -day lives. So I feel like I would wish I had spoken up more, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. Don't give um, up, that's a good one. Don't give up, that's Keep right. Keep doing it. Chin up, grab a glass of water, watch some episodes of Scandal, and just, you got this. <laughs> That's totally right. <laughs> and, uh, yes, and we were talking about master's degree, and then uh, education, and also this um, maybe lack of some uh, lessons where uh, professors could like teach you some uh, practical things, mm -hmm. you know, and like talking of experience, actually, I think that experience is, is um, oh my God. also important. Yeah. Um, so here we are going to talk about volunteer positions. I think that you, uh, I know actually that you, you have a really amazing uh, background of uh, inter like related uh, to different in internships and uh, volunteer positions and uh, so my question is um, what like uh, where are the best places to uh, to volunteer or what should our students keep in mind while applying for a volunteer position I mean if you want to work at a, at a museum uh, you should go to um, if you should go and follow and volunteer at a museum at a gallery etc etc or no matter where and what it will count like it will, yeah it will, yeah so for me I do feel as though I feel like no matter where you volunteer or do co-ops even if it's not necessarily in the art world, there are skills that can be transferable to whatever yeah. environment. Um, I did, I volunteered at the National Gallery of Canada. I did an internship at a theater company called Odyssey Theater in Ottawa um, through my undergrad, which was amazing. So that one was very, like I worked the front of house I was like an usher in between performances. It was kind of like Shakespeare in the Park type of thing um, mm -hmm. at like a beautiful, at Strathcona Park um, in downtown Ottawa. And a lot of like admin heavy work, but like talking to the people, selling tickets. And then I did another internship at an opera company where I was also doing front of house, front desk. Uh, I was helping out with the board. So that's where I got a lot of, um, mm -hmm board knowledge and working with high-end donors and that's yeah. a skill that I was able to apply with the with the power plant when I was the director's executive um, assistant for three and a half years mm -hmm. um, what else did I do oh yeah so then like the commercial art gallery like I did that too so you know these are a lot of like art related things but then I also did a lot of things that had nothing to do with art it was very much like donor relations it was mm -hmm. Um, like I worked at the Ottawa Hospital, at the Civic Campus, and the General Campus, and yeah. I was a, um, what was I? I was a, a dietary clerk, sorry, I changed so many times. I was a dietary clerk, so I had to talk to patients, and there's that, you know, um, talking to families, there's confidentiality, it's liaison yeah. with like your team, and dietary clerks, and mm -hmm. um, doctors, like, you know, there's so much that you can do that you can apply. I remember when I was living in Scotland and I was writing my thesis and I had to pay rent. So I worked for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, which was wonderful because I met Kate Middleton. Just wanted to use any excuse to drop that. But um, yeah, and you know, so like I learned, you know, how to be with high-end donors, how to talk to patrons who knew nothing but what we did, you know, so no matter what you do, 
you can always apply those skills to any role that you're working. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're interested in the arts, just volunteer. I'm going to do a full recruitment thing here for the power plant, but we may not have any space, but we love the extra help. And, you know, whether you're, you want to do something in curation, whether you want to help out with fundraising, even in the director's office and with the education team, like we have two extraordinary programs like Power Kids and Power Youth that our curator mm -hmm. of education is leading. And if you like art and you like kids, boom, there is something that you could help out with once in a while. Like yeah. just volunteer everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. just to show up. And just, just show uh, up, yes. That's exactly it. Even yeah. for us, like we have people who only volunteer for our major events. So mm -hmm. we have people that we only see once a year for Powerball because they love that event. They love seeing like all the different types of people from different backgrounds and they're just enjoying all the art and the activations of mm -hmm. food because that's the best part um you know that that's yeah. good actually i think it's I so, easy. <laughs> <laughs> so i would just volunteer as much as you can because as you said there are some people who just aren't able to um get master's degree so yeah. layer of that like they have all this amazing experience so they may not have like the edu like the higher education to back them up but yeah, they like volunteered at museums they've volunteered in art galleries they've done major events they've helped out with fundraising events you know yeah. so experience is such an important thing oh my it's god yes mm -hmm. yeah especially in in the field of arts uh in my uh personal experience and in my opinion i think that's probably in uh, like at some point maybe experience is even more important than ed education so you have this knowledge and you have these skills and probably your uh of course your knowledge like are important but your experience and your skills and your um ability to show up and just to participate in different things in different things and just yeah. to express yourself and uh, just to show up i think it's probably the main thing what do you think about it like is education um like on the same le level um as a uh, um, experience or maybe experience is even like more important to get what do you think about mm, it? that's tricky that yeah, I know, but Tricky, you know, because yeah. I think it also depends what you're doing. You know, I, if I wanted to pers if I wanted to continue working in fundraising, I know the certificates that like, if I want to apply for senior positions in a fundraising role, I want to get additional um, education in that, right? So like, yeah. I have arts admin background, I do have art history, I have modern and contemporary art. And, you know, there are some skills that you learn along the way and you see what was done before, you add a little bit of, you know, your experiences. But mm -hmm. if I, for instance, wanted to continue on to do more fundraising work or maybe apply for another position that's in a high fundraising role, then I would be like, you know what, I think I'm going to do this program again. You know what, I think I'm going to get this certificate. So it's difficult to say like yeah. education is very important and I think you should definitely, definitely do it. Like mm -hmm. I did my, I had my undergrad, I did my master's degree, where I am right now, I don't think I need um, a PhD. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I do think education is very, very important. I also do think that getting the experience and putting yourself out there is also very important. You gotta roll up your sleeves, gotta get your hands dirty, right? And yeah that's how you really learn like it i think they just go together like you can you can be yeah, book true. smart and learn all the steps that you need to do to be able to deliver something but if you don't have le savoir faire or like that i don't want to say street smart i don't want to say that but if you have like as you said like these experiences mm -hmm. things just flow yeah. so much easier you know yeah so you have, yes, because you have yeah yeah. yeah, actually, I think that you're totally right, and it goes like on the same level. Yeah. And education as important, like 
like as an experience yeah. so yeah. yeah and like even when in my previous in my previous role I always say my past life <laughs> my previous role at the gallery um you know I was in charge of reading a lot of CVs and because we were looking for people and mm -hmm. sure we do look at where you were um like if you did a master's degree or higher education but at the yeah. same time, we're looking at experiences. Like, what else have you done? Like, where are you volunteering? Like, yeah. you, uh, like I remember there was some people who were doing some volunteer work here. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I know that person. You know? Because, again, yeah. in the art world, it is who you know. You know? Yeah. And we're all supporting each other. And we're all putting, you know, giving each other, like, putting each other a good word. Putting yes. Good word and, and keeping an eye on each other. Yeah. So, Getting experience yeah. is also importance in terms of networking right so oh my God. because you get yeah. to know people and you work with them you volunteer with them and it's it's not only about like your future position your, your future job but it's also i think about um group of people which uh, like this group can support you and probably uh, it can give you some advice or something yeah. like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not just, you know, letting you know that there's a job opportunity that's available. It's letting you, you know, you could do collaborations with people that you, you, you yeah. just met, you know? If you're an artist, you can do, like, collaborations with random folk. If you are, I don't know, like what we're doing for publications and mm -hmm. this other organization is working on the same artist for another publication why don't we do something together this is a weird pose i'm doing but why don't we do something together you know yeah, and it's just talking about like for instance i didn't apply for i don't think i'm gonna get, am i gonna get in trouble for this no i didn't really apply for um the position of executive assistant at the gallery Mm -hmm. at the power plant. So what happened is when I had moved back from Scotland, because a spooky thing called immigration was like, if you don't leave this country, you're not gonna be able to come back. So I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for the haggis, but I'm out. Um, I had a, my best friend's mother does fundraising. Mm -hmm. And she actually met um, our current director, Gaetan Verna, at I think an event. And she just, they were talking about how there was like this position had, that hadn't been filled, that it's been empty for a while at the power plant, and the director is in dire need of like some help because this, like the schedule that that, that Gietan has is incredible. It's wild. I don't know how she lasts that long without someone helping her out. But, um, and they were talking and she just mentioned like, oh yeah, my, my best friend, my daughter's best friend just came back from Scotland and, you know. Mm-hmm studied art, she got her master's degree in art, and now she's just trying to find a job in her field, and, you know, it's a foot yeah. in the door. And so, Gaetan's like, oh, okay, well, maybe if you could just send me her CV and cover letter, and I'll check her out and see. And then her, my, my best friend's mom called me, and she's like, you need to send this CV and cover letter right now, and this, you know, it's an executive associate position. Mm -hmm don't know what it will lead to, but it's a foot in the door, you have all the skills, you've done things in the past that you could apply to this role, um, and it's working for an amazing woman of color who's running an art gallery, and dude, just yeah. do it. Just trust me and do it. It's yeah, foot show door. up, right? And, pardon? Sh uh, again, show up, right? Yeah, exactly, and it was crazy. It honestly was wild. And I was just like, okay, fine, let's give it a try. And uh -huh. I sent my CV, sent my cover letter. Um, Gaetan like asked to meet me. I came down from Ottawa on like a Friday. On we were in the interview. She won't want me saying this, but we were in the interview for about two hours, maybe a little bit more. I know that's a long time. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and we were just talking and. Um, it was such a great opportunity. By the Monday, I had, like, the offer. I moved mm -hmm. to Toronto that Friday, and then the rest is history. You know, but again, that's just people knowing each other, networking, talking. So this idea of showing up is really, really important. Yeah. Like, attending the events, like, going to the openings, supporting your fellow art galleries and your fellow artists and you know, going. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's really important, and I think it's something that might mm -hmm. be taken for granted. But 
we all talk in the art world. We really do. Yeah. And um, actually, um, I am going to apply uh, for jobs, like part-time jobs, because I'm studying at university right yeah. now. And, and I think it's crazy to do, like, uh, some people do, but for me, it's crazy to do full, full time. But uh, like, I'm going to apply for a job, for an internship. Uh, probably during this year and but I heard that you need to, to send tons tons of your resumes and cover letters to get at least one or two yes okay, mm, okay. Uh, come here and my question is how did you get your internships your uh, of course you as for volunteer positions you just apply and you almost like there uh, but as for internships Yes, yeah, so the internships that I had to, that I did, mm -hmm. um, there was a few, I think it wasn't the case, but a few of them, it was through the university. So in one of the cases, you had to go out and find people to do internships with, mm -hmm. and then brought it back to like our supervisor, see if they were legible for whatever reason. And then you would go and send in your CV and then a cover letter and then see if they were seeking extra help. Yeah. Right. So I think it's really, um, yeah, I'm wondering if it was the same. Yeah, for a lot of them, like I went and s tried to establish three or four organizations that I really wanted to work with because I loved the programming that we're doing. I mm -hmm. loved like the artists that were showing, whether it was at like the opera company. I was just like, oh, they have like Tosca coming and La Boheme. And I was like, well, I really want to be a part of that, you know, and that I know. And so um, that's how I was able to um, kind of get in. When it came to volunteering, I think I would just send an email to um, whoever was in charge of like the volunteer mm -hmm. coordinators and just see if they needed some help. I'm just there to learn and wanted to just pay it forward you know, yeah, yeah. the art love. Yeah. And, okay, so you have some, uh, you have education, you have volunteer experience, you have internships, you have some net um, working thing, and now your first job. Um, what was your first job? How did you get it? <gasps> yeah, because I think that's for a lot of arts, people especially it's a big whoa how 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 I'm like, <laughs> that's my first job because like okay you got your first job and then it's it's just maybe I think that it's a bit of easier like uh to uh make the next step and just like uh, and get your second job your your third job but about your first job just tell me how my first job ever um, maybe after your education, so like oh, full time man. of like the, like the most official, like the first job, yeah. So my camp counseling job doesn't count, is what you're saying. Um, we can, we can <laughs> that was managing this, but, people. <laughs> but it's like, it's, uh, uh, I think that it's more about like, it's like your experience um, related to volunteering, internships, and uh, just like, this uh, sort of uh, process of getting skills to get your first job, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's, uh, unfortunately, it's not an art related job. That was my mm -hmm. first job job um, that I was like shaking in my boots because I was so nervous about. My first job was, if we don't count the counselor one, that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was at a, um, again, at the hospital. And mm -hmm. so, because I was bilingual, I am bilingual, I was able to jump to numerous campuses um, mm -hmm. because I was based at like the Civic, but they only spoke English. But then at the General, they were fully bilingual, so I could move yeah. around. And that was kind of like the first time that I was using like my bilingual skills, like something that I didn't think, like when I was living overseas, I was in the French system. So everyone, we were being taught in French, but then after class or in, or in, um, in between courses, like we were talking English to each other. So mm -hmm. I never really saw it, especially in Ottawa, as like an asset. Um, so that was really great. But 
go into the interview, oh my Lord, I was so nervous. And my mom, like, I FaceTimed her. I don't even think it was FaceTime. I think it was Skype at the time. And I was like, I'm going to wear this. And she's like, that's awful. So, <laughs> you know, there's like, it, it was, it was, ugh, it was a hot mess. But I got the job and then just, I don't know. Like I had been working with, like volunteering in other places that obviously weren't art related and helping out, um, mm -hmm with other things fans overseas. Like when I was in Ethiopia, I was helping out my dad with some fundraising that they were doing. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it was like a run to fight AIDS. I think there was some type of related yeah. um, humanitarian thing. And I was just helping out, even if it was just like flyers or signing people in. So there were other things that led me up to that point that I was like, yeah, I can do this job. But no, I think once you get that job, you just, you hone in, you do the work. If you have to fake it till you make it, do it. And you're learning so many skills from other people. And if you don't know something, just ask. Mm -hmm. That's one yeah. thing that I was like, I don't know how to do this. And I would ask somebody, I'm like, great, now I know. And I'll never have to ask again. And then I feel like it was such a weird environment working at the hospital that it just toughened me up. So when maybe that's why when I had my inter like after I did my master's degree and I felt like I could conquer the world. And then I had like my two hour meeting with Gaytan and I was like, oh my gosh, she loves me. Like this job is mine. Let's get real. <laughs> but uh, hospital, like for me, uh, I know, uh, what, just why, hospital i think like um a lot of pe people say that if your first job is not related to arts uh, and like arts field right so yeah. you you so you are done you're not like gonna get any arts positions or something like that but you actually you prove that it's uh that it is real to like to, to get your first job, not, which is not related to art school, and then just through this transition from mm -hmm. job to, to job, just like develop some skills, right, yeah. which will lead you to your dream job. Oh, for sure. Like, I knew I was going to end up in the arts. Like, I knew it. So I wasn't hard on myself that I was a clerk at a hospital. And again, for me, it paid really well and it paid my way through university. I was able to work full-time nonstop 24 seven for a year so I could afford to do my master's degree in Scotland. So mm -hmm. I knew that my end game was to be in the art world, whether mm -hmm. it was playing arts or visual arts, like I, I needed to be in there. So I wasn't hard on myself that I wasn't necessarily doing something that wasn't in my field, like my first job, that was paid wasn't an art job. You know, yeah. I did a lot of I did a lot of internships, as I said before, um, whether it was commercial art gallery, opera company, theater company, mm -hmm. whatnot. But I wasn't hard on myself because I I wasn't there yet. And I think that I was really chill about it where I wasn't nervous that, oh man, you're a failure. I did feel a little bit that way when I moved back from the UK and I was like, I have this degree, I'm good, I'm I I did it now the doors will just open and then i applied to so many galleries and at the time like the national art gallery wasn't hiring so i just volunteered with them once in a while and like i reached out to a bunch of commercial galleries in the city and like everyone was really nice and just saying we don't have the budget to hire someone yeah. you know and so it was just two months of oh no what have i done <laughs> you know but in the end, you know, then I, I was, I kind of went back to the drawing board, established a plan and went back to my old job and was like, okay, at least I can start saving up again for whatever comes next. And it's funny because in my head, I said, I'm either going to move to Montreal because, you know, the, the art scene is fire there, or mm -hmm. I'm going to move to Toronto. That was like touch and go, who knows? And then I was like, I'll just move to New York, which was like the original plan, um, mm -hmm. like after after my um after high school and I had family there so I was like I'll be okay and then you know I did my year and then a couple months later again this opportunity at the power plant came up 
and then it was the best three and a half years and then um started thinking about like what's next what's mm -hmm. what's for me i'm able to be a part of so many different projects and i'm noticing what i'm good at what i'm not good at what i love to do what i would prefer to never do again um yeah. And you know, and then next thing I know, our uh, donor programs officer decided that she wanted to pursue her uh, PhD. Uh, yeah, her PhD, which is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was talking to Gaetan on the phone and she's just like, so this just happened. And in my mind, I was like, ha, ha, ha. And then I was like, oh, yes, I would love oh. to do this. I think with everything that I learned in the director's office, you know, working with her, traveling, meeting like our, being so close to our board members and our high-end donors and just making such great connections with all these people, it just made, it made sense, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that first. I was like, oh, no. And then I was like, oh my goodness, yes, yes. I think this yeah. is, this is my calling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So again, it's, it's all about flexibility. Yep. Right. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, and like your uh, transition and just like believe in yourself and get mm -hmm. skills, just show up, participate, volunteer, do some in, uh, in internships, right? And just yeah. just try to do something. So this yeah. is the advice, right? Yeah. And even if like the information that you want is not at your disposal, like, you know, I said, just ask your teachers to teach you something about it. If that's not doable, which in most cases it's not, just seek it out. You know, there's a bunch of organizations, especially in the city. I know like we're trying to do that. Like we're trying to cater more to what our artist community needs. And, you know, we're trying to collaborate with people at other organizations to give lecture series on, you know, finances in the mm -hmm. art or like artists who need help with financing, grant writing, um, studios. Yes, right. But you know, so just seek it out. Most of the time the information is out there. No one's just grabbing it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I think that now we have a few minutes for questions uh, from our participants from our audience and uh, the first question I'm going to ask you I'm going to read it um, okay so what educational preparation would you recommend for someone who wants to advance in this field in the field, in the field of arts um, well what exactly in the arts are we doing because I know there are different steps um, for instance mm -hmm. a lot of my co-workers co-workers um, people like colleagues when I was doing my master's degree they wanted to continue they wanted to go into teaching so mm -hmm. a lot of them just did a PhD in that specific top like subject and then continued right so they're mm -hmm. they're set but if for instance I know this is probably something that um, our assistant curator Justine's gonna cover because she is a curator so she probably has better steps um, that she can recommend to become a curator mm -hmm. But for me, I know, like in fundraising, that there are some great opportunities and programs, I think, that revolve around fundraising specifically. I think it's important to have some type of an art background if you do want to be in this field. Again, you learn things as you go, you yes. know? You know, these are things that you can be taught. You can learn a script. I, like, I loved this field, so I did all of the background in, you know, art history, arts administration, mm -hmm. and I focus on modern contemporary art. So that's how I got to where I am. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, but the next question is, uh, um, is about practical skills and which is, we, um, oh, okay, so uh, the next question, the next two questions are about practical skills which you uh, got from your university, uh, which which you got from your um, studies and and learning. So mm -hmm. uh, I know, like it's it is really great. It is amazing when you get not just like dry knowledge, but mm -hmm. like something more uh, 
practical and what were uh, the skills you develop, you uh, gained uh, during your university? Oh boy. So honestly, like university years, you learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about your tolerance. You learn so much about your breaking point. But when it comes to like practical skills that I can use today, a mm -hmm. lot of, like there was a lot of things that I learned from a book, you know, just as like background knowledge. But doing those internships is where I really got all of that hands-on experience, especially with like the theater company, uh, not the theater company, I think it was the opera company where I was working at the front of house and the front desk. And they were going through some transition at that point. So I was literally doing everything. So we got to a point, I think, where we had to cancel one of our shows because mm -hmm. we didn't get enough, I believe, funding. And also the ticket sales weren't as good that year. There had to be a reason, but we had to cancel the show. So yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. And they were just like handed me a bunch of papers and were just like, we need you to call all of these donors. You mm -hmm. need you apologize and inform them that we have to cancel this thing. Do you want to redonate your ticket to the institution? Do you want a refund? So I, I can't remember what exactly the program was, but there was like a, it wasn't Tessitura, but it was a different type of software, like ticketing database that we were using. I had no idea how to learn that, but that's something that I was able to do. So if I see that thing again, it's going to be really, really easy, and I'm going to be able to do that in a heartbeat. So a lot of the knowledge and a lot of the skills that I've been using now, I was able to apply it to, um, like, I, I learned from those experiences, like, those internships. Yeah. So I don't know if this is, I think it's still something that people are doing for credit, but mm -hmm. that is where I learned the most, really. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you actually, you, you touched on uh, the topic um, of COVID, right, and the current situation. Um, and so uh, probably our last question is, uh, uh, how do you think COVID is changing the arts landscape? And maybe um, will be there any new opportunities for art people? What do you think about it? Oh man, we are in some serious uncertain times, but the way everyone, like there are some people who were fortunate enough to like adapt really quickly with what's been going on. I know on our end, you know, we had to cancel our annual, fan, our annual fundraiser Powerball, which is the biggest, like the event that brings us the most money. And we were really unfortunate that we had an amazing um, development team, but specifically like our major events team mm -hmm. who were able to adapt and create this campaign called Power Up. And we, it was no Powerball, but the event was spectacular. We had so many amazing donors gift um, at various levels and they were able to get access to various parts of like this Zoom party that we had. And it was really great because we also had access to an artist that we're gonna be showing in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of things, so just with that in mind, like a lot of things are going to change. You know, major events, major fundraisers are gonna be different, but I think the way in which we adapted, I know I, we were all talking about various ways of adapting like membership to this like mm -hmm. digital age. You know, I think we all realize that we're now able to work from home. Um, I think I have the utmost faith in the art world that we're going to figure it out and we're going to be able to still fight the good fight and do the great work that we do, whether it's with Canadian yeah. international artists. It's spooky. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> with everything that and how we're just quickly trying to adapt and doing like field trips and virtual studio tours and you know artist talks around the world i think it's kind of made it just made us all feel less alone if that makes yeah. sense you know right. yes yes okay great i think that's that's the whole time we have for Ooh. the questions and i'd like to ask erica to finish our wonderful conversation with one uh, inspirational quote or one <laughs> advice you would give uh, to, st to a student studying in humanities or 
social science or social sciences. Something like. <laughs> oh, mon Dieu, <laughs> pressure. Um, whoo, okay. Just, um, just, it's about like showing up. It's about our, yeah, um, yeah. About like, honestly, if someone let, oh, it's a terrible thing to say about myself, but like, you know, I think if you really, really want to get somewhere and you really, really want to achieve something, don't let anybody tell you that you don't deserve to get it. That's one thing that, you know, like I didn't want to do fine arts because I was told I wasn't going to make any money. So what's the point of doing it? Do you know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. So don't let anybody tell you that you don't deserve to go after what you want, yeah. whether it's in the art world or anywhere else. Yeah, that's totally right. Thank you so much for Thank joining us today, too. Erica. It was an amazing conversation. And I think that it was not only interesting, but also very useful for everyone. And so, yeah, once again, today we talked with Erica Russell, Donor Programs Officer at the Power Plant Art Gallery. My name is Lydia Tulinkova, and it was the very first interview in our career in the arts talk series. Uh, and so stay tuned on our next event on July 31st. We're going to talk with Josh, who is a creator of Education and Public Programs at the Power Plant Art Gallery. So once again, Thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you.